In fact, there's some boring subjects. Understand the risk to our country. Freedom brings people together. You're listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Learn more at wearelibertarians.com. Welcome to the Chris Spangle Show. My name is Chris Spangle. There we go. Going to talk about a variety of subjects today. Trisha Stewart Mann is here, and she has elected herself her own president. Our favorite anarchist, other than Harry, is here. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk a little bit about Biden's first week. We're going to talk about social media censorship. Really, I have not much of a plan for this show. I'm, I'm salty AF and uh, just wanted to have a fun conversation for once. So without further ado, let's get started. Warning. This show is for adults by semi-adults. So the language is sometimes strong and offensive. Uh, I don't know what I said. Uh. Welcome to the Chris Spangle Show. Our goal is to help you sound smarter while talking to your friends. If you struggle to understand politics, we explain it from an independent libertarian point of view. With all of the irreverence it deserves, we toss out the screaming heads, put people before political parties, and give context to the news to make you think. Now, here's our host, Chris Spangle, a 15-year veteran of politics and media. Welcome to the Chris Spangle Show. Thank you for joining us. If you don't know much about me, if this is your first time catching the show, you can find all my bio and beliefs and all my projects at chris-spangle.com. Before we start, I want to thank all of the members of Wall Plus, W-A-L, for the We Are Libertarians podcast network. They're the reason this show and the network exist, and you can support the show by visiting joinwallplus.com, W-A-L-plus.com. And you'll learn all of the great benefits, like no commercials, the complete backlog. There's like 600 more shows there than there are in the public feed. Uh, you get early release doing more shows. You may have noticed more in the feed, and that is because we, uh, well, I am trying to do a couple extra shows a week. I just think there's a lot to talk about, and it's helping expand the amount of things we can get to. So uh, you will get early release for all those interviews. Um, you know, you can tune in right now, and when you join Wall Plus, you can hear Spike Cohn talk about the Jorgensen campaign. You're going to hear Congressman Amash talk about Republicans. Uh, that's forthcoming. That's not, it's not in there yet, but you'll hear it long before. And our buddy Jeff Bennett talking about what it's like to be a small business owner of two food service re food service businesses in California and Fresno. Uh, and it's as bad as you think being a business owner in California. So uh, thanks to Jeff for coming on. He is a $100 a month Wall Plus subscriber, as are John Pusillo, Casey Feldposh, Lars Nordskog, Jake Edel, Matthew Durbin, Reinhold, Christy Avery and Jason Doolittle. Thank you to every one of our Wall Plus subscribers. Uh, and thank you for keeping the We Are Libertarians podcast network thriving. Today, we're going to talk about a variety of subjects. We have, uh, as usual, our, our two great ride or dies. Uh, Harry Price, how are you? Going good, going good. And Reinhold, how are you? Well, you're going to have to turn your mic on. He got a brand new mic, so he doesn't look like Darth Vader with a, out of his helmet. I did, well, I didn't want to have the, uh, I didn't want to mess up the introduction, right? So no. I was trying to be quiet. You did a good job of it anyways. And Trisha Stewart, man, host of the Ginger Archie podcast is here. You look lovely, especially post-birth after uh, giving birth to uh, a young child, uh, not a puppy. And I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Thanks. That would be really weird. Okay. <laughs> you have a lot of points, though, to be honest. Uh, yeah, you may have heard uh, Gingerarchy is back. Make sure you go and subscribe to Gingerarchy podcast, one of the great shows on the We Are Libertarians podcast network, which features shows like Gingerarchy, the Brian Nichols show, On the Run with Rimzo Martinez, Now Hear This, Upward, Liberty Acti uh, Activism, uh, and Liberty Explained. So we got all kinds of great shows, which you can find at wearelibertarians.com. Now, let's begin with Trisha. You have Hello. appointed yourself your own I president. Am. Congratulations for electing yourself your own president. What does that mean? Well, it's kind of a concept that I came up with a while back, um, having been a diehard neocon and politically active growing up, I used to like live or die by who became president. 
And the more I became a libertarian and eventually an anarchist, I realized it doesn't really have that much effect on my life. And I need to own myself and be my own president because it really doesn't matter who's sitting uh, at a desk in the Oval Office in Washington, D.C., because the decisions I make rule my life. And so now, that may seem abnormal, because if you read any form of media or watch scroll through Facebook, it seems like it matters a lot who is president. Why do you say it doesn't matter at all? Well, I mean, there's some semantics to it. I, I suppose, you know, it does affect our life in certain small ways. Number one, local government actually has much more of a presence in my life than the federal government does. Um, but you'll notice when you go from left to right and you're stuck in that paradigm, uh, they make you think that this one guy's going to do horrible things to you. There's a lot of fear mongering. You know, if you're on the right, you know, they're going to pretty much line up Christians and shoot them in the head. And then if you're on the left, you know, they're going to put throw gays into, you know, like the fire or something. And that doesn't generally happen. And the left and the right um, pretty much rule the same way because uh, it's the establishment that's ruling you. But in the end, uh, as far as what you do with your money, your time, your family, that is all dependent on what you do and how you live your life. So it really doesn't have that much effect. And if I don't let it in my head, it has even less effect on my life. Harry, you are an anarchist. I, I mean, I always call you an anarchist because you really are. But you're so anarchist, you may not call yourself an anarchist. I mean, do you, A, what are you and do you agree with what Trisha is saying? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, I'm an anarchist. Um, I, I do. Yes, I completely agree with the. Well, not, uh, I agree with the statement of it because of the idea that you own yourself and you control what your actions are. And th these people who are in correct desk and th that are thousands of miles away of things you probably have never seen and, con and moving levers and talking to people you've never met, they cannot and will and will try to run your life, but. Find the cracks inside the system and live your best life. That's that's what I do. Yeah, I mean, Boog Boy Reinhold over there uh, with his new mic and his uh, fear and loathing shirt. Um, <laughs> just nice. quite the image <laughs> you've got going on there. Um, I would say uh, you 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 both touched on something that really bothers me, and you know for. For all the criticism that I see in our comments of how much we talk about Trump, those same people post about, but the left, but the left, but the media way more. Um, and it's because, you know, in the most episode, recent episode of the Pat Down uh, comedy podcast that I co-host, we talked about the Capitol and they, they kind of asked like, why, what are these people's motivations? Maybe they didn't ask. Maybe I volunteered and filibustered for five minutes on it. But I think, as we heard and talked about in a previous episode, a lot of the people who are in QAnon or are in MAGA or are on the right who are kind of, you know, when you really drill down to the more extreme ends of those movements, it's people that genuinely think that now that Joe Biden has been elected, socialism is about to be ushered in, that you're it's going to be a complete communist revolution. People are going to be lined up and shot and killed. Uh, it's it's not a matter of uh, difference of view of the framework of how the Constitution allows this big government program or that bro government program. And, you know, it's not 2010 anymore. <laughs> it's genuinely like a fear. And then on the other side, you have people who think that these white nationalists with guns and like, it's hard not to see like somebody trying to run the Joe Biden bus off the ramp, like that they're going to come and and kill people if they're in charge. It, and we're seeing the extremes of this stuff, right? Like when you look at um, BuzzFeed just put up an article yesterday where they took this Instagram mom who talks about baby baby sleeping. She's got a big following, right? And this reporter for BuzzFeed, she wrote this article basically saying her followers need to know that she donated to Donald Trump. This lady didn't talk about politics on her stuff. She just gave money to Donald Trump. That author doesn't realize that that feeds into the narrative, Reinhold, that they're coming to get you and makes them extra paranoid. And like, why, 
it, it's hard when you're when you see both of these sides not to see their points of the other side trying to to mess with them. Right. I mean, it's like so this would be considered cancel culture, right? So um, what always irritated me about the cancel culture is it's more of an a, a used for an attack on someone in kind of a, kind of a weird, ironic way anyway. So um, society always is changing and it is always trying to reinvent itself and push itself forward and move back. And uh, there's a lot of different forces pulling at it. So when somebody um, does something in society that other people in society don't like, they're going to call it out and say, hey, pay attention to it, that sort of thing. Um, but when you start going after people for the minorest of things or the, this little bit of nugget that has nothing to do with anything, then all you're doing is making yourself look kind of silly and you're invalidating the arguments of the people who are trying to call out things that are actually important to do, right? I mean, I see that in the libertarian movement all the time where you, you rail at every little thing all the time and you start inventing issues that don't even really exist or not reading what someone said properly and trying to make them have said something else that you could attack them. You, you get to the point where you start invalidating your own arguments. Yeah, I mean, the, I, and it's hard not to feel – when you see um, – listen – Michael Heiss has a white hot hatred for me. He does everything he possibly can to ruin my reputation. Look at the comments on our page. Like he actively drives people to swarm us. There's no reason that Michael Heiss should be kicked off of Facebook and permabanned. Zero reason. You know, there's no reason that yesterday, Caitlin Cloven, Michael Heiss, and all of the Fakertarians and their page should have been taken away. There's no reason that Trisha shouldn't be able to log into her account. There's no reason that our YouTube channel is currently on a seven day suspension because we played that MAGA video last week to give you context around the news to understand what these people think. Right. And the, my appeal was rejected. Right. So now we just we're not on YouTube today. I, I've gotten 10 community strikes for memes in the last week alone. Right. So none of those memes are like the whole point of the episode that got us killed on YouTube was basically a Christian libertarian preaching nonviolence. And they said we were promoting a violent or criminal organization. Like what? And it, it just seems, it seems when people have good intent and they're trying to do the right thing. And then there's this, the, the censorship that goes on and you see the other side doing this, the cancel culture type stuff. Like, Trisha, it's hard not to go, I see your point. You know, Reinhold's always been the type that says the cancel culture isn't that serious. It's not that thing. Like, but at a certain point, it does feel like you're under attack and they just don't want you on these platforms. So let's leave. Well, it's true. And I suppose it's it's hard to separate what is just people getting uh saying everything's cancel culture and then it actually happening, like the purge in 2018 of social media. I don't I think that was cancel culture. I think it was because there was liberal, um, libertarian, anarchist social media that got taken down. And I think that was on purpose. But then you can't you can't post violent things all the time and not expect to get flagged for them or purposely post them. And then when you get taken down or called out for it, get all of a sudden, they, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that happened. No, so, that's a great point because there are people who want to get banned so they can then go, look at my social proof. I'm so edgy. It's like the twisted T guy. He just kept saying, hit me, hit me, hit me. Well, the guy finally hit him. Right. <laughs> you can only do that so many times. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I really, Harry, uh, we all joined Signal. And Harry said, welcome to 2013. He's been warning about Facebook forever. I am, uh, I have for two years wanted to close our Facebook page. Now it's 100,000 people. It's a, it's a tremendous asset. We've got a couple dozen people watching right now. I'm sure most of them are watching on the Facebook page. You know, drives, we have a million impressions a month. I don't, why do they get those million impressions when they're not good partners, when they're going to flag me for fake news, when I'm trying to do the opposite and try to give people rational 
fact-based information. I'm not promoting fake news, but you're going because Snopes had like I posted one that said like these guys it basically the guy with the horns and uh it like I think it said he was Antifa and then because a fact checker said that it that he was not technically Antifa they flagged it and like took it down and and it's just like <laughs> there was a, there was a difference with no real distinction but and then I was promoting fake news like I think people that listen to this show know that I try to do the opposite. It just doesn't. They're taking a nuke to a problem that needs a scalpel. Right. <laughs> and and anybody that has libertarian or uh, really, I don't think it's totally a right wing thing. I just think that they don't want politics on the platform. They want to get rid of politics completely on Facebook because and YouTube, because these two companies specifically want to Disneyfy their platforms. They want, they can get more money if they introduce, you know, deals with ABC and NBC to promote happy, shiny content. And they don't want content creators on the platform anymore, especially talking about politics, because that just costs them money. Right. So they're just searching and, you know, because in the pat down group, which is a lot of left leaning people, there's more hits for community guidelines in that group than the weird libertarians group. So it's not just happening to libertarians and conservatives they don't want politics there anymore so why are we going to continue to give our business and drive our audience to a platform that doesn't want us there let's just shut the stupid thing down even though it's still an asset and drive people somewhere else that does want to talk politics like a miwi or a minds uh, correct they do not want politics on their platform. They want it completely off so they can make shiny, happy content. And when politics are brought up or discussed on their platform, it's filtered and modified through the old school mainstream media. That's what they want from these things. I'm not a prophet on, on, on all this. A lot of different people smarter than I has saw the writing on the wall when they started going after other people and or just understanding the gigantic wall garden that Facebook started to create or all the social networks uh, started to create. At one point of time, you was able to post on Facebook, use Facebook Messenger and never really get into Facebook. It, you, it, it started with federated code that you could just send information to. Just like Mastodon was built on that same system, so was Facebook. But eventually in about, I want to say it was like 2012 or something like that, around that time, they just started to wall garden them off. That's when a lot of people will remember this because I remember distinctively when you couldn't use Facebook Messenger in the Facebook app, you had to download get a new app to use Messenger. That's because of the walled garden system. As they were putting mm -hmm. things up, things were breaking. So they were tr they were trying to make sure, like, if you're inside of our world, walled garden, you have to be inside of our garden. So they have that control. The other thing with the whole control thing is the ad revenue piece because they want to. People do want to discuss politics because that people get people to interact and talk. It, and if you go somewhere to go talk politics and you go somewhere, you you, t you can actually take that ad revenue and those eyes to it because there's not much things to channels like to us because it, it, it has so much engagement to it. So they have to also stop you going somewhere else. So they make it you know hard to go anywhere like because like well you're not gonna get the engagement you get so like look how much engagement you're getting if you give shiny content no or, that's exactly why yeah. you know you've pushed me i mean we talked about it for years on this program and and behind the scenes you've pushed me since 2012 13 14 to like get off of these platforms they're they're not your friend and i've known that but until this week there hasn't been a lot of uh initiative like i've been on MeWe for two years and I've posted to MeWe for two years every episode. And then, like, I just got tired of, like, clicking that button and doing that thing for no reason. And I stopped. Mm -hmm. And the one guy that liked everything on MeWe messaged me on Facebook and said, why'd you stop posting on MeWe? And I said, dude, you can just find it here. Like, you know what I mean? And now we've we've uh, set up a page and a group on MeWe, and there's, like, dozens of people starting to join, right? That's still not the million impressions I can get on Facebook. So what the 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 F Facebook uses fear, okay? Like they're really uh, Facebook uses the fear of not having engagement mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and they know that you're not going to go somewhere else because other people aren't there. And until it starts costing content creators like me that it, those impressions and it takes some guts to leave these platforms, mm -hmm. it's never going to change. Right. So that's one of the reasons I want to shut it down. But like I've gotten a lot of pushback from, you know, other people in in the group and the network like, well, you're kind of stupid for walking away from that because you still even if you don't post memes and you just post the link to the episodes that auto post and you never look at it again. I mean, that's still seven, eight hundred people that see just a, a post, right? So, like, that's still some advertising, right? There's still this opportunity to come to talk to several thousand people on a Saturday morning. You know, so, like, that's, there's a real, as a content creator, there's a very real dilemma that I've tried to wrestle with for a couple of years now because other people don't want to leave this environment. They want to have everything here. They don't want to have several, like, I'm looking at it going, Okay, there's Float, there's Telegram, there's MeWe, there's Minds, there's Parlor, there's Gab, there's like all these different places that you can go and drive people. And I just don't want to do any of them. Like I'm at the point where I'm addicted to my phone and I don't want to touch my phone. I just want to log into chrisbengel.com, send you some emails and do these podcasts. And then you guys can do whatever you want, but we can meet at, 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 the, at the blog and on the podcast. Like, and then I can spend the rest of my day doing my work, talking to my girlfriend, playing with, you know, I, I just, I don't know. It, it's, a, it's a difficult dilemma and I'm not sure what to do about it because I'd like to just unpublish the page and drive everybody somewhere else. But you also don't want to lose that, right? So what do I do? Yeah. All right, so well, a lot of the things is you can get people to help you move content around because you have the ability in podcast form and the video form is to download it, get the MP3, get the MP4, or whatever your file format of choice. Yeah, but here, you where? The, Twitch? What? YouTube? Uh, Facebook? No, where do you no, take the video and where do you put it? Because none, no, none of these no, people no, no. are partners. I'm just saying, like, you just, like, but the thing is, what's the ultimate goal? To get uh, money from the from the content or to get people to listen? Because if it's listened, you can allow people just to take the content and let them upload it where they want, their favorite platform. You know, if they start starting something, some BBS form out there for podcasters that are sitting out there, like, cool, here's the MP3, go upload. So you're go you're upload. saying set up, up, download this show, set it up, uh, set, set up a Dropbox or something or, like that. Or and tour it. Or, or tour it. And you guys do with it what you want, which I'm totally fine with. Yeah, just touring it. More people have it. More people. Boomer factor. What'd you say, Trisha? You forgot the boomer factor. Right, <laughs> Trisha. Harry, Trisha has no idea how to do that. Torrent. <laughs> These are learned skills that everyone can learn how to do, and it's a great <laughs> skill. I know we've finally got you guys to 2013. We go teach you how to torrent here shortly. We'll get you. Get you on board. <laughs> Reinhold's rolling his eyes. He's doing that classic Reinhold holding his face in the background thing that our Facebook audience and YouTube watchers have come to love. What What are your thoughts? Well, part of the problem is is that you you have competing interests going on here. So you have the competing interest of I don't want to prop up Facebook because I don't think Facebook is a good actor. Competing with I need to get you know, the, I want to try and get my message out and try to, you know, make this something bigger. And the only way to grow is using the app, the, the platforms for advertising that you have to get people to know that you exist. And, and the problem with all these other places, everybody's like, let's go to MeWe, let's go to Minds, let's go wherever. The problem is, is that the only people who are going there are the people who are upset about Facebook pol policing politics. So you go to these places and what do you see? Politics. It's all you see there. Well, people go to Facebook for a lot of different reasons. They go there to uh, keep in contact with family. They go there to uh, look at what their favorite, what their celebrities are saying or doing, or uh, interact with people who have similar other hobbies that they do. And like maybe ten percent of what they do is talk about or think about politics. That you know, we're different. We talk about politics all the time, and it's kind of like our center focus. But the majority of people on Facebook don't do that. So that's where all the people are going. And, and I have a nothing much better response for our content from my high school and college friends and regular people in my life that I've run across 
than I do the person who is uh, than libertarians. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, that like yeah. pe people respond to the way that I do broadcasting. Normies like me better than my own people, which I don't think that's uncommon. I'm sure if you talk to any other libertarian podcast host, they're like, yeah, they're really mean to me. Um, <laughs> but, but what it's going to take get people off of Facebook, though, is going to be a platform um, like a Minds or a MeWe or something like that that provides something more or something better, who does not just does it exactly the same. You go to these and they're all clones of Facebook. So they're just trying to recreate Facebook. So all we're now doing is saying we just want to go with the people who are, you know, we'll, we'll let you do all of the stuff for us. And, we'll, let, and we'll, we'll stay in your little walled garden uh, as long as we believe that you're a bene uh, benevolent leader. Kind of like politics, kind of like government, where oh, we'll let you tell us what to do with our lives and, and keep, you know, keep uh, taking away our rights and everything else. Uh as long as we think that you're a good leader, but as soon as we get a bad one in, then we have to rail and change about I, it, right? I so think that's my biggest beef with Facebook and Instagram specifically, because I think they're the worst of the partners, and I would like them not to be, <laughs> right? Like, I've yes. I've since 2005 been building an audience here, and it's given me everything that I've got, right? Like, I want to be on Facebook. I want to continue to use the platform to say what I want to. To people i'm not driving insurrections and conspiracy theories you'd think that they would be the type of content that they would like on their platform but i don't know the rules because they consistently more than anybody else change everything right like trisha touched right. on it. 2018 the, the, right the last five years the rules have totally changed like even if you run a uh an entertainment brand of uh for instance, an entertainment brand that I run that is not political, that is not like they got demonetized on video last week. We have no idea what did it. We have no idea why they didn't tell us and there's no path to get back. And they they spent years saying invest in a page, get a page. You know, your local dentist office had his personal profile and then force you to go to a page. We're going to give you better lift on the algorithm if you go to the page. And then in 2018, just if I could snap like that it was gone and the only way to get any lift on a page was to pay them and then now i'm getting messages i'm not even getting them it was jeremiah another admin on the page for we are libertarians got a message saying you need to deal with this guy or we're going to unpublish your page because he keeps posting memes that are that are violent <laughs> okay uh and so you just go all right there's nothing here that like like I have spent thousands in advertising with these people. Like, look at Donald Trump. Like, the dude spent, like, billions, <laughs> millions uh, advertising, and they they don't care. Like, they really don't. They That's, it, that's the biggest bad. problem I have with Facebook. Yeah. The biggest problem I have with Facebook is that if something happens, you go, well, why? Like, I had I, – I don't get, like – I've never been zucked or anything else. I've never taken off Facebook. But I did post something once. That was a uh, picture showing an example of racism in the 40s, right? And it got pulled because somebody reported it. And I'm like, why did this get pulled? Because it's obviously showing something that happened in the past. I'm not promoting it now. And, you know, it, it eventually got appealed and they gave it and then they put it back. But that communication was completely automated. I never, I never talked to anybody. I never said, hey, can you tell me what you're doing here and why this happened? So that I can avoid ha having it happen again, and that's the real problem. Is that it's it's almost like they don't want to help you avoid the issue. And I think a lot of this really has has come about because of what happened in 2016, and the yeah. bot networks and everything else that were was going on. And they're so paranoid and scared of that that they're going to have bots changing society through Facebook that they're they're overcorrected way in the wrong way because of it yeah i mean trisha you've been involved in a lot of uh cd underground pages in your past and i mean talk about just sort of the the blind sighting that a lot of your friends have gotten well i i have a lot of friends that were paying customers that ran these professionally like and employed people to write for them and 
uh, Facebook doesn't answer questions. Like you could ask, they've hired attorneys to say, why did you unpublish this? And um, a lot of it, you know, we could blame on, well, it's just a bot reading something, but there's like no, there's nobody working for Facebook that answers questions. And I think that's on purpose. But I wanted to touch on something that Dennis was talking about because these other platforms, we say, well, we want everybody to go over there. But honestly, it's a free market thing. And I'm, gonna be, I'm on the other their platforms and have been for years. In fact, I was on MeWe when it was brand new, trying to sell something from a boating accident. <laughs> <laughs> I was there for a day, I'm like, this sucks. Um, because they're they're just not good. I, some are better than others. I do think MeWe's Me, a little bit better. Me, Me, so Me, is, of, uh, Me of the alternatives, MeWe has gotten a lot better. I really do like Mines because I want to see Bill Ottman succeed. Yeah, um, I'm not, I, I appreciate what they're trying to do, but I always think, why not get some celebrities to put exclusive content on these? Why not get what people want to bring them there that Facebook can't give them? Because yeah. right now, you scroll through a Facebook feed, it just got more interesting stuff. And that's just how it is. And until somebody can figure out how to make theirs more interesting and corner that market, then Facebook's going to be around. Yeah, Here's what can't I be the same. It's got to be better. Right. And that's the problem that these people are just trying to do the same. Harry, weigh in. Well, okay. So a lot of it is it also has to be grown organically, and it takes a while. Facebook really only took off because you can only get, they became very exclusive because you can only get in with your .edu account. It was college kids only. It became very exclusive, and they went after a small target audience. So it was used a lot to play in for like college parties, right? And that's what it stood apart from MySpace. Your parents weren't on it. Your parents couldn't get on it. All these people couldn't get on it because they didn't have a .edu. So it had that small bit of exclusivity and then it finally opened it up because when people were graduating, you know, that you've hooked people to your system, they got people on. So a lot of those other systems are having that issue of what, what, what's, what really does set you apart or you're just another clone. Now clones can work. People love clones. Um, you, if you don't, look at a lot of the mobile games people play. People play clones of other games and do other things all the time and get millions of views and millions of dollars from doing clones. Um, but my main thing with the like the network voice is they if they are grown out of anger, they're probably not they're probably just gonna fizzle up and and like perish really quickly. Um I think the other different system I think what Ryan will touched on too, if if running to another walled garden after leaving a walled garden is that is not the best that's not the best idea. You may want to go to something and go back to the, some of the old school stuff, the internet, and make it go to a place that's federated. They can talk to other servers. Like Friendica and Mastodon are pretty neat because you can talk to each other and have this decentralized platform for it. People, uh, people, if you want Nice to have your information, he has created a Mastodon, Agora.lol. <laughs> <laughs> I have personally not signed up yet, but uh, yes, there is a, a wall uh, Mastodon, Agora.lol. You well, the problem with Mastodon too, the mass, the problem with those federated systems too is that though, if you get flagged as being, um, not liked, like a, mm -hmm. I know people who are like well, those are libertarians or those are alt right guys, so we're blocking them, and then you get on a block list that gets passed around, and everybody uses that one. Mm -hmm. You are then mm -hmm. the same as what happens on Facebook because right. it's it, but it's it's self content blocking. It's people choosing to do it on their own which what's more libertarian than that but it's still you end up getting blocked because of somebody else's perception of you that now a third person is trusting and and not even listening to what you have to say well yeah but that exists on the current platforms right now like if you're not yeah. blocked by steve shies what are you really doing on twitter you know <laughs> i mean i'm i'm sort of kind of blocked by a lot of people on facebook so you know, yeah. what's to say about that, right? Yeah, I'm blocked by people I have never communicated with and never talked to. But I go to message them like, wow, I'm blocked. <laughs> you're you're welcome. That's that's my fault. Uh, it's, if you're associated with this network, you're just suspicious at this point. Uh, going back to comments I made earlier. Um, so I guess, first of all, even though it is a closed system, Substack is a closed system. It's what I'm using at chrisspangle.com. It has community features, it has podcasting features, blogging, email features. I really like it. I'd appreciate it if everybody went and signed up at chrisspangle.com uh, because that 
I, I can keep those emails and they are committed to free speech. They've said we're not kicking people off the platform. We, we you know, we've heard that a lot of times, but it's it's a uh, I, I hope that they're going to to be correct. But I still will have those emails. I will still have a way to talk to you, even if in a decade they change their mind. Right. Um, so everything is going to stem from Chris and we are libertarians dot com and liberty dot com. Those are our websites. Make sure that you, you know, really if we've also got a daily email called the Libertarian Aurora that you can sign up for it at uh, we are libertarians dot com with a ton of news, ton of information that you get in your email box every day. Uh, and then uh, I send a private newsletter and I'm going to be sharing all my memes at Chris dot com. And via email now like i i'm not posting memes to the social networks anymore i'm not picking one i'm just gonna put it someplace that benefits me right that allows me to have some control right like i'm it's not it was not the wrong decision to drive people to links like twitter.com and facebook.com because it helped build everything but at the end of the day like moving forward i'm not going to do things to benefit me, we, and mines, and these other places, I'm going to do stuff that benefits the network, that benefits Chris Spangle, because that that's going to allow me the income to A, live, but also to invest in building my own systems. And it, so it's just important for people to sign up at chrisspangle.com or the Libertarian Aurora. Um, and, you know, we'll, we will put, Jackie asked for a cheat sheet of wall links. I will put that in the show notes. If you want to go follow the MeWe and the Minds and the alternative stuff, I've got a, a, the links are A right now up at the Facebook page. And then I'll put them in the show notes too. So, uh, but I like the idea of torrenting the video and the email because Apple uh, to be one of the worst journalists, Brian Stelter at CNN, they, they're, there's just a crop of liberal journalists that love to use their position to put, it's activism, right? Like journalism should be someone showing up and journaling events of the day and what happened and trying to find out the, the facts and the truth. And the facts and the truth will then hold people accountable. The mode of many journalists today is I'm going to use my position to hold people accountable according to my political ideology. And Oliver Darcy is one of those people. He's trying to get OAN and Fox News and uh, the other one, Newsmax, kicked off of cable. Uh, they... You know, he's he's a big reason why uh, Alex Jones was deplatformed, you know, using his position at CNN to say, uh, why do you have these people on there? And and remember, this program was one of the few conservative or libertarian programs that was saying, you've got to defend Alex Jones now. If you don't defend Alex Jones and the right of free speech to exist on these platforms and fight them entering into censoring political speech, you will be next. Liberty memes and Austin Peterson during his campaign and Alex Jones. These were the canary in the coal mines that everybody ignored because they were shouting property rights. Well, now that they've been banned and censored and their friends have been banned and censored, now they're screaming free speech. And when you make the property rights argument, they go, well, we don't need property rights. We need the government to fight to fight for us. And you just go, well, then you're not a libertarian, right? Like if you if you want the government to censor or intervene in private businesses, you're not a libertarian. Like it's, and I don't say that very often, but like property rights are the foundation of a free society. Free speech is incredibly important in a free society. And these are values that we must not, we must not fight the, we just can't fight the lesser censor by giving new powers and tools to the greater censor, which is the government. Um, it's incredibly important, but we need to innovate our way out of this problem. And so anything that we're going to do to innovate out of this problem, because now they're trying to, to, to put pressure on podcast directories, and then they'll go to podcast hosts, and they'll say, Fireside, Megaphone, Libsyn, Anchor, why are you hosting? They'll start with QAnon podcasts. They'll start, they're already starting with it. Why are you hosting this podcast? Because they're going to start with the people that you can't defend. Well, you know, it just kind of makes sense that you wouldn't want a QAnon conspiracy podcast on Anchor or one of these podcast hosts, or you wouldn't want them in the direct. We'll take them out of the directory, but we'll leave them on their host. And then uh, six months to a year goes by, something happens, 
let's say QAnon associated person commit some violence, then they'll go, why are you hosting this podcast? You know, and they'll put, you know, it'll start on the blogs and then CNN will pick it up. And then, you know, it's this whole echo chamber. You know, we are libertarians has seen this coming for three, four years, which is why we're on four different podcast hosts. We have two different email services. We have uh, four different websites. We have two different pod website hosts. We have a lot of the reason the the wall money, the plus money, the Patreon money, it goes towards building backups and mirror sites. And so if Megaphone wakes up one day and decides not to defend free speech, we're still on Spreaker and and uh, SoundCloud and Fireside, right? So um, I'm turning a switch in a day as opposed to, oh, crap, it's going to take me months to re-upload all this stuff. So, you know, we're we're protected and i would say to any one of my podcast brethren do the same you know and empower your audience when liberty memes got zucked i said to david and peter i was like give people the permission to take the liberty memes and make like eight million liberty meme pages and they did that and there's a ton of liberty meme pages you know and so we're gonna harry talk about how we can take our content, both audio and video of these shows, and figure out a way to get out of these siloed gardens while still being here, but build some backups. So what what would you recommend to me, first of all? And pretend <laughs> I'm going to take your advice. Okay. All right. All right. Well, the beauty thing of podcasts or the way people get their blog posts, the brilliant code, which was helped written by um, um, Aaron Schwartz. Um, if you've never read his story, it's a great a great story um the rss feed that's federated code okay so it just kind of goes out there the, they, the things a lot of those podcast sites is just they do a lot of the hard coding for you doesn't mean yeah. you can't do it yourself and send up these same codes from servers that you host yourself so you know granted fireside and all these other places do it for you you probably should look in trying to pay someone to get that code done on the back end just have, so it's ready and then so it can pull from a storage location that you have that you either host locally or even through the torrents. Torrenting seeding allows for your things to be out there. So as many people who download and put it on, 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 on that will torrent it will speeds up torrents of downloading the episodes and allows it to be everywhere and somewhere as long as someone is seeding or has the things on the um, that's torrenting the file. It's always out there. It's hard to delete at that point because you can't get rid of everything. The... The problem with all of this decentralization and trying to get things out there it comes to video, especially high quality video, especially live streaming video. Video is hard to do on the internet. It eats up a lot of bandwidth, it eats a lot of storage space. It's it's difficult. It, that's why like most people who do it and do it well are large companies. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I the the brand that I work with pays tens of thousands of dollars in bandwidth. Yeah. You know, and that was the the thing when Jones got banned, you can still watch Alex Jones. You can still listen. I listen to Alex Jones every few days. So it's like he didn't disappear totally. Mm -hmm. But the cost of not being on these platforms is astronomical. Let's say this show got banned off of YouTube because we got a third strike and we can't use Facebook to come to you. And we're going to upload this two gig video file to the cloud and you guys can then download it through some private company like Akamai. Mm -hmm. And then I pay the bandwidth. Well, that two gigs, every time it's downloaded, it's mm -hmm. two gigs, two gigs, two gigs, two gigs. Well, that adds up to hundreds of gigs. And so the cost for three, four, 500 people to watch that show, instead of it making me a little money on YouTube ads or free on Facebook, it's now going to cost me two to five thousand dollars a show, or a month. I mean, excuse me, a month for me to just broadcast that show to you. I don't have five thousand a month in Patreon, you know. And so that's part of it. Is is the insidiousness of the argument of you can build your own is true. You can go build your own. It's just really, really expensive. And so it's just really important. Like Patreon is another uh, place that you guys should support us. And we have several different funding ways, right? Like Patreon and the store and PayPal and crypto. You go go to wearelibertarians.com slash support. Um, we offer several different avenues. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but you have to support creators you like. 
If they are ad supported, you need to go to the advertisers, thank them for carrying that show and buy that product. If they're Patreon supported like us, you've got to join their Patreon because people like me need the need the capital to start building infrastructure for other other plans because it's mm -hmm. it's just uh you can't wait. You cannot wait until they've decided they've had enough with you and then you're scrambling. You Correct. you got to I'm I'm a the type of person that thinks 5 years ahead. Yeah, and the and Patreon used to be and still is a scary space scary space to be at. Yeah, uh, because they would still go after people, but so much people saw the money there, right? And so competition has happened. Doesn't mean you can't still get like taken off of Patreon, but competition allowed them. So like if they try to help come down with the censor too hard, you know you can easily run to different uh, different platforms. And that's one thing I was always talking about the the other issues with these alternative like social network platform is that it's good, but they need to have some competition and set themselves apart with special. There's a reason why Facebook was so threatened um, with Instagram because it was just photos, right? right? Yeah, you know, like a clone of, of Instagram where it's just photos, but you allow people to express themselves how they want to be expressed as well, with the way they want to be expressed, you know, will do pretty well. And it, will it hit on the bandwidth thing? No, nah, because Instagram like compresses the crap out of it because no one really looks good in high HD anyways, and the filters brings everything down. So, you know, it's not as difficult as, as doing videos on there. That's that's what's going to that's what's going to take right. you down. And, and I want to talk about, because I know there's somebody watching going, well, just behave. I, I, and Reinhold makes this argument and Harry, let me get this out. I shouldn't have to explain to YouTube that I'm doing a news program and explaining an empathetic view of people that don't deserve empathy, but also we need to keep an eye on them, right? Like we're not promoting we're not endorsing, we're not enabling, we're taking a tough stance, but we're explaining. So people can have an understanding, right? Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have to explain to, to these companies that this funny meme that was a joke is not fake news. Please keep me here. Like, it, it just, it, it galls me. I'm salty about it, you know? Like, and yes, I can behave, but I don't know what behave means, right? Like, and I don't think that there, it, it, and I've been saying for three years now, and Harry's been saying since 2013, there is no behave, right? Like it just is going to creep and creep and creep. It started with Harry. Who did it start with? And why is there no, why is the argument that just follow their rules is probably insufficient? Well, because the first thing they start with the undesirable, you're right. They start with um, hackers and um, sex workers. It's the first ones they go after. They go after them first because there are people find them hard to defend. You know, no one like, oh, these are people are doing bad things. These people are doing this. It's the same thing with the uh, when uh, the like the adult industry first went to got on the Internet. Oh, we've got we can't let them on the Internet. We've got to get them off, you know. And then once it gets them off, you go after the conspiracy theorists because they are doing this. And then the anti-vaxxers, well, they're spreading these fake news. That's why we've got to push them further under down. It's like, and once it's become easier to go after them and you you, you set the, that precedent that it's okay and it just kind of just moves and roll like that. Like the whole shutting down your credit processors, that's happened way before after those things. And that's why they still go after people who are doing um, arms sales and, and people who... Dabble in the dart is. I mean, they shut down hit, uh, Trump's Stripe account and PayPal because yep. yeah. these companies are happy to jump on the press release. Correct. Like, yeah, get on the press release, get the get the free publicity, and then when they're also with their friends, they're also able to like uh, to bring that stuff up. That's why they could you see a lot of this power is being what wielded around silicon valley there's not something special about silicon valley and our over and our overconnected world has showed like why are all this happening and centralizing around in this one spot it's control you know you've got the and and it's all sloshing around one spot you know they're producing air making air and but for some reason we're all buying their air it's pointless do you find that convincing enough reinhold you turn yourself on It's not that it goes against what I'm saying as much as it is. These platforms need to have clearly defined rules. 
mm-hmm. and they need to follow those rules. I need to be able to explain to you when you're not doing what they want on their platform, mm-hmm. right? That's the real problem is that there's it's ambiguity that you can't figure out what you're supposed to do. When I when when the argument is behave and you'd be fine, that's not really it. it it's more if they have a clearly defined set of rules, you follow those rules, and you can do you know whatever. And then when they say that you broke a rule, you can say no, I didn't. You can hash it out. You, that's where legal system comes into uh, in a, in a anarchist society as well, right? So you have the rules, uh, you have the the way to adjudicate the rules, and then you move on and you do your business from there. Um, what they're doing though is that they're making judgment calls and reacting to things and they're not setting up good rules or good explanations when you break them in order for you to feel like you can function on those those uh, uh, platforms. So, you know, what do you do at that point? Like we the strike that you had against on, on YouTube, you appealed it. In that appeal process, they should have been able to say yay or nay, they, they should have said, okay, it's okay, because we looked at it, we saw the context, it makes sense, we're good to go. But they didn't do that. They didn't watch it. You know, they just said appeal, yeah, they did. and that's yeah. the, the extent of the information is... Right. There was no, no conversation, no explanation, right. nothing. And that's the problem. Right, because they don't care about us. They don't care about me. They care about making sure that Disney is not upset that Hulu is not upset because those people are partnering with them to make them an entertainment platform. YouTube has given up the idea of being YouTube and Facebook because of financial incentives have given up on being free speech platforms. They have given up on giving a voice to people who had no voice previously. They've, they want their corporatists. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. And everybody just needs to understand that and decide, do I want to, like, don't operate under the illusion that they care about having you there. You know, you are the product, Mm -hmm. right? But you have the power to leave. Mm -hmm. And frankly, Harry, Trisha, and let's get Trisha in here. I mean, do we need social media at all? Like, it doesn't seem to be good for us. I... I actually think that it can be used fine, but I agree with you. Like what Dennis is saying makes perfect sense that, that there should be people to review and go over, but he's making the assumption that they care. Um, I just think they're just too big. Facebook is too big, just like the United States is too big. And so, um, you know, when we get over this corporate culture, we can break down into little pieces. The problem is nobody's making a better product. Again, like why would you want to go anywhere else? Facebook still is king. It still is. Um, and I know you're saying that this is arguing against the free markets and voluntarism, but to get a little off there, like uh, Facebook and, and Instagram, they're kind of in bed with like the Atlantic Council and the government. So it's not like they're completely uh you know private companies they they certainly have their cronies and uh in washington and wherever and so they're going to do what's best for them um as far as their corporation goes and that can be very political you know well, they yeah, could be shut down in a heartbeat but creative destruction is a key function of the markets destroy their power by walking away and I- draining them of their lifeblood and all of a sudden they're not they're not the the power but the thing is you have to get enough just like people to care. Right. and that's the same thing with liberty you can't say well let's get rid of the government when only three percent of people give a crap right. about liberty you <laughs> right. need to educate people that's where it lies because when you get 10 15 20 percent of people able to take care of themselves able to own themselves well then you've got something but we just don't have that right now we have a culture of people that rely on you know, the nanny state and, uh, you know, they're waiting for somebody to lead them. And so you're never going to have people walk away until people become leaders or, or understand that they don't need to be led. Harry, do we need social media at all? Should we be on Facebook at, at, in any, like even to post the cute, the, really what they want is they want cute dog photos and people having happy, shiny interactions on Facebook. But I will tell you, and I want to remind people of this, had this discussion in the Facebook group. Well, just behave. 
And why not just try to elevate the level? Why why post memes and try to elevate and, and work to elevate the level of discussion on Facebook? And my reply is, as a person that has done this for a living for nearly 20 years on these platforms, who is a professional social media marketer, they don't want that. They want you pissed off. Because if it, go look at the likes on our Facebook page, on the We Are Libertarians Facebook page. The, the thing that we put the most time in, my discussion with David Bowes about the rule of law that is thoughtful and took us 40 minutes to, to have that conversation, and it's a distillation of David's 50 years of knowledge and all this hard work, and it's valuable to society. It, it's probably going to get like 600 impressions and two likes. But if I just throw up something that sort of made me laugh and is an impulsive post to jab at people that I that I'm salty against it will get 40,000 impressions and 500 likes and comments and and it's because the entire system of Facebook and Instagram are designed to outrage you it is a drug to keep you stuck in outrage you know I have great and watch great conversations on Twitter and people go well you can't have good conversations in 250 characters you certainly can I like like I've never had a problem with Twitter. Like they've never gotten, I've never gotten sideways with them. They seem to articulate the rules a little bit better. They're, you know, they're less harsh on things, but Facebook and Instagram, it is, it is specifically designed to piss you off, Harry. All right. So I think the rated R radio, radio star said it best. <laughs> we don't need these. We don't need social media. Just like the Romans had their lead pipe, indoor plumbing and it's driving them crazy social media is probably driving us all nuts do we really need this thing but we're so enjoying the thing the this pseudo luxury that we have to communicate with this people this way it's like are we even meant to are we even supposed to should we even do this is this the wrong term for humanity and it, it kind of feel like it is like i don't think we should be doing something like this i you know it's I, is it a great way to find people sure it is but you know, it's not like dating sites. Once you've got on one to do that, they try to keep you there to communicate. You know, most people do on there, find someone, get the heck off and go do something else with it. You know, go off and go hike, go do something. You know, I, I feel like I have a tough time. So I'm dating uh, someone, my girlfriend, Reagan. She has uh, the best kid in the world. She's two. She is the happy. The two of them are the happiest. They're like dressed by birds in the morning. They're angels you know, dancing and having fun all the time. And I find myself when I'm spending time with the two of them, my little brain's going, what's happening in group chat? wonder what's happening over on Facebook. And I can't concentrate on the two of them because someone said something mean to me. I need to fight. I, I wonder how many likes I got on that meme that I posted. You know, mm -hmm. like that little addict, like I'm clearly addicted to my phone. And it distracts me from reading. It distracts me from enjoying the people in my life. It it it's mm -hmm. taken the ability to converse. Like I have a real problem with it, yep. you know. And so that's another argument for wanting to kill the page and just delete these apps from my phone and just post links to to the hard work I do, because I don't I don't want to be addicted to it anymore, and I don't want to be a pusher, right? <laughs> All right, so like the, the this uh, uh, delete the Facebook app off your phone. Just do it. Get rid of it. It's fun. It's awesome. The only time I get on Facebook is when I'm on this computer on this freaking Mac. This is right. it. This is it. The only time I'm on Facebook when I'm using this Apple product. That's it. It's awesome. Best best thing ever happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then because even with the signal chat yesterday when I was at the Walnuts meeting, right? Yeah, I was looking in. I was posting memes because I was just getting tons of text messages. But after a while, I, I hit snooze. I'm like, ah, snooze this thing for like five hours. I'll come back to it. Yeah. You know, I'll read it all in the morning, you know, because I was excited that you guys were on signal. And we could actually talk and send things. It was awesome. But I was in a group with people who were in meat space talking. Uh, uh, Ryan Hole was not there, of course. And uh, but we had, you know, amazing time in meat space um, at Triton. So you know, it's meet space is not his grinder meetup. It is uh, an actual <laughs> meeting of people in real life. And that's the thing. And by the way, go to we are libertarians.com on the sidebar. You will see a button for Liberty and chill. Click that button. It will take you to the Liberty and chill page where we have 
downloadable printable materials for you and a guide to set up your own in-person weekly meeting based around meeting libertarians in your area. I will adjust the artwork for you. Like, let's start making that our social media. <laughs> like, just go download this thing and have Liberty and Chill every Friday. Harry, what is Liberty and Chill and what do you guys do there? Liberty and Chill is just to get people to, like I said, it's the better form of social media. You can come there, you can bring, you can share memes, you can talk about your day, get a hug if you haven't hugged someone in a while, maybe after the pandemic, of course. Uh, <laughs> but you actually can. Not real hug. Give a hug. But you can like oh. meet you can meet people and actually see and and see people in it and it's in a great a great club. I um I think the our current table that we have here in Indianapolis, it's it's my go to uh, friend group. We've gotten incredibly close, um, especially during the pandemic because we really haven't gotten that many new people because the coof. So I, uh, I, so I can't wait till it's all over and more people want to come out and hang out with us. And um, I think the only rule we have is just don't stump for candidates. That's an old layover from the other group because someone came in and tried to filibuster uh, an old Liberty and Chill uh, meeting. So the great Brett Bittner um, helped, helped put that rule in place. Uh, so. Yeah, we, it was Melissa. If you know who Melissa is, she showed up trying to stump for a candidate and they told her to get lost. Um, yeah, it's not, a meeting, <laughs> right? It is. I mean, at, at certain points with Liberty and chill or the old meetup days, we'd had 120 people show up to some of the meetups in 2009. We've had, I mean, people are way lonelier. I can tell you based on my dashboard of watching hundreds of thousands of people a week uh, through these four or five audiences that I manage, people are so much lonelier than you can imagine. And they, mm -hmm. the lockdowns and pandemic have made that worse. The mm -hmm. election and the big buffoon, the the head ape that is trying to like incite people and make it all worse. I mean, as much as Donald Trump has a right to be platformed, him not being around anymore is going to have such a tremendously positive effect on people's psychology because most people will not see what he's up to. It's going to backfire because you're going to push people in with real extremists and they're going to become extremists themselves. So that censorship always fails. But for much of the country, it's going to kind of take the temperature down, not having that. I mean, ask anyone, Trisha, I mean, you and I, we both know people who've been in abusive, narcissistic relationships. And when they leave them, that sense of relief and calm and ability to rebuild your life is huge. And I just see a lot of parallels between the end of the Trump administration and how everybody kind of feels. Well, like you can only be so angry for so long before it like poisons your mind. Right. Um, what Harry was saying about, you know, Liberty and chill and stuff. I've always used social media. Um, well, it's a great way to communicate with people daily, especially like I have a newborn now, so I'm kind of at home more. Um, but I've always made it a point to meet people in person then. There's nothing like that, you know, especially then when you communicate with that person, it's just different knowing them. And I have noticed like on social media, some people are a little they're scared to meet up in person, but it's good to join local groups, like if you're into the LP or not, um, and then go meet them for coffee or go. So I try not to just have friends that are in Facebook, like if I talk to you every day on Facebook or Instagram, or whatever, then I have your phone number and I've met you in person. So I, right. I don't know if that's just the type of person I am or maybe the generation I grew up in. And there's a younger generation that just doesn't do that. My children being included because they're just not allowed to meet up with people in person anymore. Right. Um, so it's that can that can be really uh, bad for your psyche not to uh, sit face to face with somebody. Yeah, Reinhold, that just seems like the answer is just less searching for me we and more searching for liberty and chills right i, mean, I, think I know i know really the irony happy. of asking you this question is hilarious but i'm, I'm gonna ask you anyways <laughs> well i mean the thing is is that there are different ways that different people give it so it's different personalities so some people are more introverted some people are more extroverted and really you kind of just have to find what works good for you and what works best for you and you can't um, when we talk about, well, they're just trying to feed you this like a pusher. Well, the problem also is, is that that's how pe humans respond. So if it's not Facebook, it's doing it. It's TV that's doing it. 
it's radio that's doing it. It's, it's some other entertainment or mechanism or salesperson or company who's trying to manipulate people to buy their stuff, to make, you know, to, to make money off of you. And, that, and that's kind of, you know, the argument that, you know, people who are against capitalism have is that this is part of, part of that problem. Uh, I still think the capitalism is a better way to go, but we have to understand how human nature works too. We can't just pretend it doesn't. Yeah. So, you know, how do you deal with that? And, and there are people who have addictive personalities and there are people who don't. So there are people who have no problem. I can turn off Facebook and social media and walk away and I have no problem. I don't have any urging or pain to get back onto it. But there are people who do, they get addicted to that because they have addictive type of personality and you can't make, blanket rules against all of this stuff either so i don't know how you protect those people and is it even our job to protect them you know do we do we just kill the facebook page or do we use it to to just get word out but not use it to try to manipulate so let's let's say let's not post those memes so we're not trying to manipulate people into liking us um but we're also only doing it because we find it funny and we want to share that humor with other people and when does that line get drawn and then we have to worry about comedians and how the comedians do this stuff you know it's yeah um it's really just a larger societal issue that we have to talk about it's just that we are now seeing it more and it's kind of always played out but we're seeing a lot more now because we are much more interconnected because of the technology and there's some theories that you can really only kind of care about or know about you know, 30 people in your life. You, you just don't have the brain capacity to do it any more than that. And when you get on social media, you're trying to interact with hundreds and hundreds of people. And is that what's causing the brains to start responding differently and, and becoming addicted? Because it's, it, it creates an anxiety that we just don't know where, it, where it's coming from. We can't pinpoint it. So we start pushing it off on other things. Yeah. I think the, um, go ahead. Sorry. I'm just saying that's there's just different ways of looking at it. I I don't know if we have the answer, and I don't know if we will have the answer anytime soon. Right, and you you even see it inside some people, some people's work, their work life. You know, if you are uh, especially people in IT or people into a position where you have to support hundreds and hundreds of workers, uh, if you're a social person, you want to have these like, interaction with people. But but if your company's got 385 people, you can't meet all of them, and it's kind of hard to support them with a small team, and it stresses you, and it, that's a huge impact on your work life balance because. As Ryan Hall says, like you can only really be, you know, passionate with like thirty different people. So if you eat up twenty of those at work all day, you know, when you go home and you're kind of like burnt out, you don't want to see anyone. And that drives you even more lonely to sit at your house, you know, because your brain's too tired. I, th I think maybe the way that I'll handle it is leave all this stuff up. Give like Galt was really excited about me. We so like give Galt. Go for it, man. Have fun. Post, you know, you like posted some memes and I was just like, well, I wouldn't have posted that, but I don't care. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Galt, it's sort of like with Harry with Discord, like do it. And you know what? The Discord that we've run over the last three or four years, like has opened up like all kinds of cool friendships. And like, you know, I learned this lesson from Harry, like stop being such a, a white cis Midwestern male. Like, because Harry taught me that if like I don't care about video games or tech really like that's just like I don't get it it's sort of boring to me but then when Harry would start talking about that stuff and then all of a sudden the audience was like more of that it made me go oh maybe I need to like let other people talk uh, because other people like th they see themselves in Harry's interest and like that's what discord like when Harry said I want to start a discord I'm like do it because even though I'm not interested in playing video games there's a huge amount of connection that goes on there, right? So, you know, we've said this before. We said it a couple of years ago. We said it last year. We say it often, like, set up. If you want to manage one of these communities, cool. But personally, I think I just want to delete all this stuff off my phone, maybe go and post the articles or whatever, like, just keep plugging, you know, putting out, here's the content that I did. But like my energy and heart goes into just writing the email newsletter and just doing the podcast and not chasing, you know, not not posting 
shit anywhere else <laughs> for my own sanity, but also because if you're going to be inflammatory or if you're going to say things that, you know, people are going to wrestle with, like they can come to you and see it as opposed to you putting it in their face, which I just think is a very different thing, right? Like sometimes I post what I think, not because I want to be inflammatory, but I know it's going to be because it's going, it's going against what the audience generally thinks or what a, a, co a conventional wisdom, you know, you know, that uh, I just view things differently than other people a lot of times. And that pisses people off just because you exist. Well, if people want to come and see what I'm talking about, then they can come to me as opposed to me putting it in their face. Like, it, does that seem to be a better way to go about this? I mean, I, th I think so. Other than I don't know if you're if like, what you're doing on Facebook is putting it in their face. Well, go to my Tubin's dank meme spot and you'll see. Uh, no, I, 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 I'm, I mean, I don't, I'm not an edge lord, right? Like, that's part of why libertarian don't like me is because I'm not an edge lord. <laughs> um, but I do think that, like, from an energy standpoint, you cannot put yourself on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, MeWe four different pages on each of those platforms. Like there's just so much energy that a person has in their day, you know, and by the time I get to four o'clock and it's time to distribute crap, <laughs> like I'm not going to spend another hour, like engaging in a million different communities. That's why and people hire people to do that. <laughs> right. I just feel like that's what, pe like all the, de like the decentralization, Harry, it it's, like we're asking people as a brand to participate in like 20 different communities and like that's not good for people. Right, but you but you don't do it unnaturally. If you participate in the community, it's natural for you. So for me to take the uh, MP3 file and to torrent it, it's okay. I torrent a bunch of things. I call it the I've got a big old NAS over the corner called the public library. Right. You know, it's Yes, yeah, so if you if you're on my local network and you type in the DNS, uh, it, yeah, it's the public library because that's what I see it is. It's a big torrent hub, you know. But that's natural for me. I'm not doing something unnatural, something out of my day, you know. Just like how uh, some of you, you know, naturally just wash your hands. You wash your hands when you use the bathroom. It's something natural. So don't go to a platform for the aspect like I'm doing this because I have to post this here on MeWe. This is the only thing I do on MeWe. I post this on MeWe. This is the only thing I do. Don't do that. Go to MeWe, throw your skateboard videos up, your um, cool like uh, like uh, craft or your cooking videos like that, and then post that thing there. Don't, don't do it unnaturally, you know, because it's that disingenuous interaction too. People also see too, and that's another problem of these a lot of these platforms is people disingenuously go to there, you know. Crap, I'm censored here. I've got to run here, you know. Right. You know, I would love a social media network with just like uh, just for people who barbecue. We send barbecue tips up, you know, it's like a big BBS of barbecuers. You know, where's that at? I, I know everyone's like, well, just start your own. Well, I got time for that. <laughs> I personally go to a BBW, a BBW uh, barbecue. That's a BBW barbecue. <laughs> well, the, 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 go ahead, right? When you're talking, when you're talking about the different communities, though, I mean, let's say you have we have a MeWe page, we have a Minds page those don't necessarily have to all be interactive with each other. They all have a common theme in the fact that they're fans of this show, but it doesn't mean that we have to, you know, individually go to each one of those and try to interact with all these different social media groups. So let the people who are there kind of let that grow on their own. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Kind of like with the discord, you know, you're not, you're not in there all the time hanging out and talking. You do show up sometimes and, and have a chat, but you know, Harry and I and Paul and a bunch of others, we kind of make that a special or a more special place to go to because that's how we kind of communicate. So people who like that would go there and enjoy that. Whereas maybe MeWe is going to be more of the Galt type of God help us version of this show. <laughs> yeah. So so people who are who want that can go there. You're a gold bug, then you're going to love <laughs> MeWe. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then maybe minds is some, you know, something else. I mean, that you don't have to try to m worry about all the different social medias being what you want them to be. Just let them grow organically on their Tr own. Trisha, what say you? No, I think Dennis has a good point. Um, I don't think it's good to just 
pull and get it, you know, go off of everything because obviously, uh, you know, wall gets listeners in a lot of different ways, but you know, we always want new people and fresh eyes. And so be as many places as you can, but I think say, maybe you just, you're overextending yourself, Chris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's why, you know, people hire social media managers to do things which for Ron Paul didn't work so well, but, um, <laughs> yeah, but he got, he got, pardoned. He got pardoned, but, so it's fine. <laughs> but, uh, um, I don't know. It, you just make it what, make it what you want. You know, I, I enjoy Facebook still, but eventually I'll probably get off of there. Um, if I can ever go back, um, trying to, on me, we, I think Harry had a good point. Maybe just, you know, instead of me just posting the same crap I would post on Facebook, maybe I could, you know, put up some other stuff about life and family and things like that. And you, you know. dear God, please, please. Hey, Reinhold, I think it's you. Let me mute you. There's like a big sound. No, no, it's, is it me? Yep. It's you. Uh, it sounds like the air conditioner is, is on. Um, is. so anyways, it's fine. We're almost done. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. You have to post the picture. You have to post the meme, the burning meme. You have to. It's the worst picture. My husband is such a troll. <laughs> Can I you have no idea you took it? that. Trisha has this great meme, a burning meme, and she is like nine months pregnant and asleep. And it's very unflattering. But it is the funniest Bernie meme I've ever seen. And she won't post it because she's, you know, doesn't. I mean, it's really a bad photo of you. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, disappearing message on signal yes <laughs> well we've seen it harry she'll have to post it to signal but yeah i just wish you'd post it trisha it'll be the most viral thing you've ever posted i might actually i might put it on instagram first and test the waters <laughs> <laughs> no put it on me we drive people to your me we page um <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. Final thoughts, everybody. Let's go around the horn. Let's start with Trisha. Final thoughts from you. Oh, well, just on the initial thing about being your own president, um, you're the master of your uh, own life. And so I would tell people, you know, that are concerned and worried about Biden coming into office that uh, the sun will still come up tomorrow. Life will go on and life is what you make it. So uh, don't worry. Uh, you know, you're, he's not going to, you know, come to your house and force a mask on you and shoot you, your life will probably be pretty much the same as it was uh, before. And it can be better if you make it better. So. Joe Biden is likely not to sniff you. Probably not. <laughs> Harry, final thoughts. Uh, let's see. So with Biden being the other people's presidents right now, you, you may see people commenting and talking about different things. I want to jump on everything this week that has happened since Wednesday and tie that albatross to Joe Biden. Nope. Wait a while. Keep waiting. Hold back. Give him more rope. Let him hang with themselves by their rope. Let more actions happen. Let more things happen and just hold it up and give them rope. And then when it's long enough, you, you just show it to him like, look, look what you've been doing. That's yeah, it. like I... I, I... <laughs> I see libertarians like over the last week. Oh, well, Joe Biden is already a war criminal. Like, I have no idea if Joe Biden's a war criminal. Like, I'm going to approach Joe Biden the same way I approach Donald Trump. I'm going to wait and see and and see what he does that I agree with or don't agree with. But I'm not like knee jerk Biden derangement syndrome. You know, now that got me in trouble with Trump because I for three years just kind of was like, well, he, he gets a bad rap. And I was kind of naive to to the problems with the guy. You know, but like being an immediate critic and filing impeachment uh, articles like when Al Green did that in 2017 in January, it was laughable. And it's laughable when Marjorie Taylor Green does that now. Like everybody just chill like the, the you know, Joe Biden. 2008 too, 2009. It, right. Everybody just chill. But that being said, next week, we've already got 16 pages of show notes on Joe Biden's first week and uh, his 30 executive orders. And so next Saturday, we are going to take a look at everything that Joe Biden has done thus far and his proposals, like the $1.9 trillion plan and minimum wage hikes and explain to you why minimum wage hikes are bad. Uh, so look for that next week. We're, we're in the process of putting that together and we're going to have one of our super nerdy fact-based shows. So make sure you tune in next week for that. Reinhold, final thoughts? 
uh, final thoughts. Um, first, uh, there's going to be some good stuff in that conversation too, because Biden has actually done some good things in those executive orders. But you would um, you would say that? I would say that. You know, why not? But. Uh, but they're mostly associated around immigration and things like that and reversing some of the Trump stuff. That was horrible. Yeah. Um, but we're having this conversation about uh, social media and um, society and communications and things like that. And just make sure that you don't let any of that stuff dictate who you are and what you're thinking and what you're doing. You keep yourself centered, find, find a way to do that, find a way to keep yourself centered. What, what brings you your joy, brings you your happiness, and focus uh, your energy on that. If you find yourself getting too anxious or upset or, or freaked out about conversations on social media, go back to what what brings you your joy. And uh, also follow me on Facebook and Instagram and, and all these other places. <laughs> Twitter. I'm on all of that stuff. Legends of Hans. <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Says, see how Spangle just cuts the black man off and eats up his time? Typical. Uh, I'm sorry <laughs> if I cut you off. Do you have anything else that you'd like to add? No, I just had a joke. Like, I was like, or like a, also a fear. I was really uh, with the National Guard post from the Politico. Uh-huh. Um, I wanted to bring this up. A couple of things with it is one, I was just, just thought it was very despicable that people were victim blaming the National Guard for having to sleep there and blamed it all on Trump because, well, if those, his supporters didn't do that, they wouldn't have been there. I'm like, yeah, but someone put them there in the uh, someone put them in that stupid parking garage. Second fear from that whole thing is that a bunch of Trump bus would show up and put them in a Trump hotel, which would have just, just ignited and set everything to a blaze. Would have been awful. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Very good. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you to Tricia for being here. It was great having you. Thank you, Harry and, and Reinhold, for giving up your Saturdays. Thank you to me for not belching into the microphone just now. Uh, Thank you, everybody, for listening, and thank you to our Wall Plus members, and we will see you again soon. Please, if you got something out of this, share, share, share on Facebook, on Instagram, wherever, before you're banned. Let's get as many people over to uh, the, the show in the meantime. So, all right, thanks. Take care, and we'll see you again next week.